Hello there, THP 494 and 598. Matthew here. All right. So we just solved one problem. We took care of this very sassy thing here where we started to think about how we uh, work with multiple displays and what that means and right how we can really kind of jam and start to do some sassy work with that. That is great. That's really wonderful. But what happens when I don't only need a big fat array of buttons, but I also need a big fat array of knobs or sliders or you name it. How do we get around the problem of needing more real estate than my screen allows and avoiding drawing um, some additional pop-up windows that are going to introduce some performance problems? What am I to do? Okay. Well, we've already done all this work right here, so let's go ahead and copy and paste that. We're going to actually take advantage of working with this. And let's rename this one uh, Panel Selects. Yoink. Excellent. So you might have noticed that here when I made the copy, right, uh, my order reversed on all of these. What gives? This seems terrifying. Well, if we take a look inside here, we can see that if we look at both of these elements, that both of their align orders are set to zero, which means they're kind of competing to be in this zero place. We can fix that by making sure that um, we order them specifically. So I can go ahead and tell my interface that it's always in the zero position, and my output is always going to be in the align one position. Now, if I want to switch that, right, of course I could. I just need to make, um, well, I could do that the long way around, right? We could make this zero. We could make this one one, right? So they've uh, swapped. And they'll swap again here, right? I could also just make this one negative one, and that would put it on the other side also. Great. All right, so we fixed that. Um, let's go back here inside of panel selects and start to think about how we fix this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into interface. Let's scoot our buttons over here. We're going to take advantage of the fact that we've already got something jamming and working just the way that we want here with buttons. We're going to change the name of this one to knobs. So we can imagine that this is going to be all buttons, this is going to be all knobs, but we've got to fix that first. So to get started there, we're going to take advantage of the palette browser. So let's open up the palette browser. Uh, let's head to tweak. Let's go to sliders. Let's grab just the knob and drag and drop that right into our network. Yoink. Excellent. We are going to grab this knob right over here. We're going to go ahead and get rid of our button. We'll drag the knob in, right, to be our master operator. Now we need to remember to take care of a couple things while we're here. So, for example, we need to, uh, in the panel, make sure we turn the display off. We don't want to display this one. And we actually need a few more of these than we have. We need a total of 70, actually. So, in our table, let's crank up the number of rows to 70. We should have a ton of these things now. We can back out here. Uh, at a glance, we can see, well, gee, that doesn't look quite right. And it shouldn't because we actually only want 10 on a line. Or excuse me, we want 10 on a line and not 8 on a line. And now we've got a thing of buttons and we've got a thing of knobs. Okay. That's, that's working. That's getting somewhere. Now, if we move out here, well, that doesn't look right yet. Okay. That's all right. Hang tight there. Let's add a select comp. So we haven't actually talked about the select comp very much, but just like we have a select top, chop, sop, dat, we also have a select comp. So we can use the select comp to actually grab whole panels. And in fact, that is what we are going to do. Now, before we get there, let's go ahead and take these two panels and we're going to turn their displays off, right? We don't actually want to see them off, please, because what we want to see is this panel. We want to see the select. If we were to open this up, right, we could see that, oh, geez, gosh, this looks like really like complicated. It's still like so far away from what we want. Let's make sure that we uh, fix our line order. So I want select to be in the zero position. I want my container two to be in the one position. I can see there's a kind of empty stand in space. And in fact, if I was to turn up the alpha, okay, there it is. This thing is just waiting, but nothing's there. What gives? 
So just like our other selects, if I drag um, my comp right on top here, I can set it to select my buttons. I could also set it to select my knobs. Now, handy to this, you know, something that's really nice is that I can change all of these values, right? So we can imagine that I've got a whole set of elements that I need control over. I need to be able to switch back to the other elements and set some things here and switch back. And all of the values that I've set have persisted, right? Which is what I want. That is totally jamming. So the question then is, how do I fix this process of being able to bounce back and forth between these two things? And in fact, we've already learned a trick to do this, right? So we're going to use just some simple scripting to handle that problem. So let's make a container. And let's go ahead and make this container 120 wide by 50 tall. I just happen to know this because I've uh, done this already. We're going to go ahead and set up this container to a line left, right? Let's close this for right now. We can go ahead and plug it in here and we can see it actually get is getting uh, dumped right there in the top, right? And I know that because if we go ahead and turn our alpha background up, we can see that's where it's going to get plunked in. So I may probably don't want it up there. That's okay. I can fix this. Let's align bottom to top and then let's vertical justify on the top. Great. So now I still have this space reserved for any kind of image that I like. And then I've got uh, a space right here where I'm going to put some buttons. Okay. With that in mind, let's go ahead and take this bad boy. We'll turn his alpha back down. We're going to dive inside and we're going to add a button. So this button, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to fix its width. It's going to be 60 wide, right? So it should make sense now why we changed the width up above. Let's head inside here. We're going to change this to be buttons instead of button. Let's also go ahead and switch this to be radio down. Copy paste. We'll move inside of this bad boy and set him up to be knobs. And I can hear you already saying, why on earth, Matt, did we do that silly radio business? I don't get it. And that's because here above, right now we've got a radio selection. We've got knobs, we've got buttons. Right, I've got a way to select which one of those that I want. Okay, so how do I take advantage of that? Well, you might ask, that is a lovely question. Let's take a look here inside of our container and we'll be able to start to think about how this works. So let's add a panel chop here for one hot second. Now, if we look at our panel chop and I open up the actual interface, we can see that one of the things we have access to is this radio, right? So I've got these values here, radio, and I can see that I've got a radio position one and a radio position zero, All right? So these two values are gonna be a way that I can start to think about driving some scripts or driving some actions with scripts. Let's grab a panel execute, dat, one of our favorite ingredients, right? We're going to go ahead and let's split our view just so we can see it. Excellent, because I want to know about this bad boy over here. And in fact, I'm going to want to know about buttons and knobs also. In my panel execute, first I need to make sure that the panel value I'm looking for is radio. And I'm going to look to run this script every time the value changes. Right, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these other definitions just to tidy up. And because I know that I know, um, there are no other actions that I'm going to add here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start to think about how uh, I can drive different pieces. So I like to use descriptive names for my variables because it just makes it easier for me to read the code when I come back to it. So I want to think of this select one, right? This select, I'm going to think of that as my active panel. That's the name that I'm inventing for it, right? That's what I'm going to call it as a variable. So I'm going to say active panel is going to be equal to the operator that is above me called select one. That's who active panel is. Now, I also want to know about buttons and I also want to know where knobs are. Okay, so buttons is equal to the operator that is, you guessed it, above me called buttons and knobs. Similarly, is the operator that's above me called knobs. 
Now, in the past, we've done some things that have uh, been a little more kind of like kludgy and workaroundy. And I've got a new way for us to solve some problems here that you are going to just love. Uh, or at least I hope you do, because I certainly love them. So here, um, we're just going to write some simple if statements. So we're going to start with um, our zero. So if panel value. And we can remember right, that what gets passed in here, what we see as panel value in this function, corresponds to what this guy is right over here. Right, so the panel value that I'm talking about is going to be a, one, a 0 or a 1. And in fact, if we wanted to test that, we could just print panel value. And it helps if I can spell. So if we print that, um, and we can open this bad boy up here. Let's see it, right? I get a 1, I get a 0. I get a 1, I get a 0. If I had a panel chop, I look just at the radio, right? So we should see 1 corresponds to 1, is 1, 0 is 0 is 0. Good, everything's right in the world. That's lovely. Okay, so if my panel value, panel value is exactly equals equals zero, right, it's exactly zero, then I would like you, please and thank you, to take active panel dot par dot select panel. Matt, how do you know that? Okay, don't forget that over here in our select, we can see that if we click right here on select, we can see the variable name, right? So the parameter called select panel. Those guys are the same. So I want active panel dot par dot select to be equal to buttons dot path. So this time, rather than writing in the string, right, which would be in our case, just buttons. That's pretty easy. Um, to practice uh, a way of thinking about this that kind of uh, pushes us to think in a little different way, right? Uh, we can do this instead. We could say, grab buttons and put its path in there. And that's buttons right here. Dot path is something that we can ask for. So we should be able to see that if we click on buttons, the whole path for buttons gets dumped in here. Now that's the absolute path, which is just fine. Uh, and that becomes really useful for us, especially if um, this happens to be an interface element that doesn't live here inside of this particular container, but it lives someplace else, right? Um, now we don't have to worry about all the futzing of knowing all of the right relative elements of the path. We can just ask for the path. Okay, we've got one other thing to add in here. We've got two more lines. So the next thing we want to do is if our panel value panel value is equal ay 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 to one, now what I would like to do is I would like active panel dot par dot select panel whew, that's a mouthful to be equal to knobs dot path. Right? So now I can drive, in fact, what thing shows up here with this button. Ho oh, ho, that is so sassy. I love that. All right, let's close this bad boy down. We can get rid of you. Uh, let's make sure um, that this is all. Oh, correct. Ch -ch -ch layout, vertical, top to bottom. What happened? There we go. Okay, this should mean that. Oh, I swap seed. What is going on? Come along now, sassy. Very good. Okay, so now we can see that even here I have access to swap those. Great. So now I can bounce back and forth between lots of different kinds of uh, user interfaces, right? And we can imagine that maybe this isn't just like uh, two radio buttons, but maybe this is a whole litany of radio buttons, or maybe it's a table, right? We learned about how we might do something like this with a table. We suddenly have access to uh, a way of changing our user interface in a like a wildly diverse way uh, by just taking advantage of different panels that live other places, right? So it's not hard to imagine that we could do something with sliders with 
you name it. All right, so that gets us closer to thinking about how we can start to build interfaces that have some other mutable and interesting elements in them, right? Okay, yeah, this is getting close. This is really quite handy. So now the question that we have is what happens when I don't just have one display attached, but what happens if I have multiple displays attached? What can I do and how can I start to think about wrestling with some of this when I have uh, got kind of uh, installations that become much more complicated and um, a little more unwieldy? And that is what we will tackle next. So next we're gonna uh, take a hot second to take one break from thinking about how we actually build the interface elements. We're first gonna talk about just understanding the concepts of what it is we are totally up to, and then we'll look at how we solve some of those problems. All right, so that is coming up here in our next installment.